And wonderful Jesus, I pray that not one person shall see Catherine Kuhlman. Not a young person in this place today shall see Catherine Kuhlman. But I pray that not one young person shall cross the threshold of this place of worship, the same young person they were when they entered. The Holy Spirit shall move upon our waiting hearts. What I pray for them, I pray for myself. For no one in the whole world is as hungry for more than the one who is speaking this morning. If only these young people could know it. For just a few minutes as I bear my soul to them. I shall do something I have never done in my life before, never. And yet it's something I have to do. But through it all, may they know that the one who's speaking is crying out for more. Because there is so much. Every atom of my being is crying out for more, so much more. It's a simple prayer, but you know my heart. I never plan too much in advance, and I'll just be very frank with you. I usually take one day at a time. I take one service at a time. If I planned in advance, I would have had a nervous breakdown a long time ago. And let's just be practical about the thing. It is just like that. I knew I had the great service yesterday. And so we were praying about that. Last night, weary in body, I'll tell you, that was one of the shortest nights I ever spent. Something happened to Tulsa time. I don't know what it was. But when I awakened this morning, I was lying in the same position when I went to sleep last night. And I don't remember going to bed, you know. But when I awakened, I tell you the truth. I knew exactly what God wanted me to do. And I'm doing something I have never, never done in my life before. I tell you the truth. What I say to you, the world does not know. It is something that you don't talk about. It is something you don't tell the whole world. They wouldn't understand. God has a purpose. God has a reason for having asked me to do what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what Catherine Kuhlman is really like. Every time... Somebody gets Dino off privately. One of the first things they'll ask is, what's Miss Kuhlman really like? Wherever they get my Maggie, I don't care where we are, anywhere in the nation, they'll get Maggie off and say, now Maggie, confidentially, what is Miss Kuhlman really like? When they get Dr. Metcalf off, Someplace privately, you know, probably inviting him for just a, a little luncheon or something. But they're really wanting to know just one thing, Dr. Metcalf, confidentially, what is Miss Kuhlman really like? Few people really know. My sister. My older sister, who's old enough to be my mother, said not more than three weeks ago, 
she looked me directly in the face and she said, you know, Catherine, I really still don't understand you. And I often smile when those who are nearest to me will say, (laughs) that's all right, we understand you. I know Catherine Goldman. I know her better than anyone else in the whole world. And for just a very few minutes, I'm going to tell you what she's really like. You see what the world sees? It's just the glamour of it all. All of that 14,000 people really saw yesterday. All that the thousands of people really see of Catherine Kuhlman. She comes walking out on stage with a long white dress. And they see the smile. And some say she's a little too theatrical. (laughs) Somebody in the Shrine Auditorium who didn't know who my older sister was, and they were sitting directly behind her. They'd never been there before, and they said, don't you think she's a little theatrical? And my older sister turned around and she said, I want you to know, I've known her since she was born, and that's just Catherine. (laughs) And they see the glamour of everything, and they think it's wonderful. And they think it must be a thrilling life. Oh, it must be a glorious life. All you have to do is to get on a long white dress. (laughs) All on earth that you have to do is to just stand up there and smile. All you have to do is is to just do it. I was on a talk show the other day, Dallas, Texas, and... I was being interviewed, and one of the questions was, Miss Coleman, what would you say to, to uh, a woman who uh, would aspire to be a woman preacher? You know what I said? I shocked the one.